at all. So now I'm just like, mm. <laughs> when we talked to Jason, we just talked Power Rangers. Nice. I don't right. know anything about Power Rangers. <laughs> you are good to go. All right. Welcome to Terry and Gary's Low Expectations Podcast. Uh, today, unfortunately, we don't have uh, Jason Font, but we have something even better. Hey. Uh, Leslie... Goatee. 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 Yeah. Goatee. She is an artist extraordinaire with a unique style and some amazing artwork that uh, I do have hanging in my house. It's kind of uh, mm-hmm. weird for me sometimes seeing some of the art that's in my house. <laughs> but, but, uh, oh, you have some good ones. <laughs> yeah, you have some really good ones. So, Where'd Dave go? Dave disappeared. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, mean, just, I just ducked away for a sec to grab a drink. I, I'm, I'm okay. grabbing a Mountain Dew. There he is. Oh, the lights. <laughs> and Dave, uh, Dave's going to join us today. He runs uh, and owns uh, Detroit Podcast, which he does a lot of shows. And so we're, we're very happy for that. And we're very happy that. Uh, well, I'm, yeah. I'm missing my nerd art conversations because there's no cons this year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Reach into the choir. Right. right. Now, Leslie, um, you, where exactly are you from? Uh, I'm a little bit from all over. Like I was, I'm an army brat. I was born in Georgia, like lived overseas, Massachusetts, all stuff. So I'm just, um, kind of from mid Michigan, like grew up in Jackson. So I hate Jackson. Um, and then now (laughs) I'm in the Ferndale area, which I love. I love Ferndale. I love being close to Detroit. That's a fun little town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And being an artist, um, that there's a pretty big art scene over that way, correct? Or oh, most definitely. It's actually um, I've been, you know, you always think about like going to other states. Like Michigan's really wonderful and beautiful, but as an artist, you're like, oh, cool, I can just go live in California for a little bit. But there's such an amazing art scene in this area. Like within within 30 miles of my apartment, I can hit up like at least 12 good art shows a year that are lucrative. And I do make my money primarily from doing live shows. Like I like, you know, comic cons, art shows, craft shows, stuff of that nature. Right. Now what what got you into art and what type of art do you prefer? And do you, I see the uh, sheets behind you, Dave said. (laughs) Yes. Totally, totally had them. Yeah, those were on my childhood bed. I mean, not those particular ones. Let's not be creepy about this, but (laughs) but I had (laughs) them. I mean, I did find them at a yard sale, so who knows? They could it's, have been. It's possible. <laughs> I still have my Bambi sheet, so. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I still have uh, my brother. I stole some Batman, like, old sheets for from my brother, and they were always my, like, college tested dude sheet. Like, if he's nice. like, uh, I'd be like, nah, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Peace out. That was the same thing when Gary came in. He's like, Bambi, I, I love Bambi. We're going to be great friends. Right. <laughs> would have made fun of me. I would have kicked him out. Been like, yeah. get out of here. Like your Christmas tree? Right, right. Oh, you had to bring that up, didn't you? <laughs> Gary That's on the tree. And I still have my Christmas tree up. You know what? We, in this weird pandemic time, I'm not faulting anybody. We've noticed some neighbors putting up Christmas lights just right. because they're just like, okay, whatever. Dude, time there's, has no meaning anymore. Let, yeah, let's just be real. Like quarantine, just it, it. I don't know. It's it's blurs day, the 87th of April, Mayuary. And, and, well, yeah. <laughs> See now, if I had a bar like uh, Dave over there, it kind of looks Christmassy. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I, this is just, I, as soon as I heard alcohol kills the coronavirus, I, 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 I'm all in. I, I just right, right. <laughs> Before that, it was just iced tea, regular right. iced tea. Right, it was all just cans of soda, that kind of stuff. It was, oh yeah, bottled, it was all bottled water, just different. different. <laughs> and then if we're doing a show where we don't want to show alcohol, what do you do, Dave? With the background? Oh, like I said, I mean, if, I mean, there's, I mean, I'm sorry, there's not really a, a show that I that doesn't want to see my bar, uh, but no, I mean, I, dude, I like, like I said, I'd, I'll, I'll go with my max headroom look, you know, I, I get, uh, you know, let's be real, and it's me, so I've got, you know, a, a variety of Star Wars ones, uh, got it, got to have a little Bruce Leroy every now and then, <laughs> you know, so it's yeah, yeah, very nice. Now, now, once we're, you know, let's face it, I'll, I'll never be able to do that. I'll never be able to find out the technology to do. <laughs> Even though you said it's pretty easy, your background's gonna be your background. Yeah. yeah, my background's my background. So now, um, obviously, Gary, you know Leslie for a while. Yeah, we met a few years ago, and she's come to our show. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't think yeah, it's that's a great show little show. show. I love it. Oh well, that, 
Yeah, great little show. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> now, what got yeah. you end up here? I want, um, I want to see your art. Oh, I want, uh, you got to show Terry some of your art and and tell me where it comes from. What what made you decide to start drawing what you draw? Well, so. I you know I started out like doing basically I've you know going back with uh, Terry's question. You know, it seems like the cliche thing to say, but I've drawn like since I could hold a crayon. Like I never really thought about it as a career until you know I was that kid in high school watching anime and Sailor Moon because I'm that age appropriate that original Sailor Moon was on and I would get it before high school to watch it and that was one of my first instances of there's several episodes that show like wi like specifically women like making careers as illustrators and animators and artists and like craftspeople so that was when it was kind of just like oh wait this can be a job and then, you know, I went to, I, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm never going to say I wasted the year because, you know, no education is like wasted ever, but I spent too much money going to Michigan State, <laughs> realizing that I didn't want to just have um, a Bachelor of Fine Arts. I wanted something more specific, something, because, you know, I do appreciate commercial art. So um, I, my father used to work for General Motors. They knew a technical illustrator that went to this great school in Canada, and that kind of went from there. And I was at a Comic Con, Motor City Comic Con, when I was like 18 years old, getting ready to apply for this school, and two wonderful illustrators. Um, uh, I knew him at the time as Steve Murray, but you guys know him as Chip Zdarsky of Sex Criminals fame, and he's written a bunch of stuff, and he's the Applebee's troller guy. Um, him and his very good friend, Kagan McLeod, who's done Infinite Kung Fu and a lot of other beautiful illustrations. They were both there and they both graduated from Sheridan. And so I was like, okay, I don't want to be an animator anymore. I want to be one of these dudes. And, you know, they went me, I went to visit the school and then it kind of was from there. But just, it, it really all started absurdly enough with Sailor Moon. <laughs> that was when I was just like, you can have a career in art and, you know, it's it's weird and scary, especially right now, since I do make most of my money from live shows, but it's it's awesome and fulfilling and, you know, every so often you have to get a normal job to hustle, but every so often I'm able to quit it and just keep on doing it. So I've been a gingerly made has been three years all by itself right now, which is wonderful. That's good. That's excellent. I was going to say that's, I mean, actually, that's a good follow up question is, so what are you doing and, and how have you adapted? during these chaotic crazy last few months yeah um it's very like a lot of uh, there was a big push like i did it um a lot of other artists did it where i started to do like virtual craft fairs basically yep. where i would just have a bunch of my you know i'm selling off like original art like i have a big stack here of these are you know i do a lot of uh i started off doing like nerdy stuff like this i don't know if you can see this is this is my weird joke that i made that um only a few people get <laughs> nice <laughs> nice and i have to explain it but i love it so yeah that's i do i, I have it, i'm sorry humor. anybody you have to explain that to does not deserve to own it that's, that's <laughs> <your problem. laughs> well there's some people i kind of love it because i'll go um because i used to do more comic cons than craft shows and as much as i hate to admit it like with the way my illustrations going right now like craft shows um it's more lucrative for me so i do you know not so much half and half anymore and it's more like 25 percent comic content so i'll take a, something like that to just a craft show and people will pick it up and be like oh my god i have no idea what this is but i love it so i just need to, to buy it so you know it works okay yeah me. yeah or i'll do stuff like you know if anyone loves bill bib devoe yeah. nice thank you so yeah, and oh yeah, I love. Okay, so 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 far I'm gonna need both of those, so we're gonna have to stay in touch. After. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Yeah. So I love Twin Peaks. So you know I do like more traditional. I started off doing more traditional stuff like this, or um, where is my? These are originals that I'm showing, and then this is an example of I have an original of this, and then most of my work are eight and a half by eleven prints. Prints, yeah. You know. So also in addition to Twin Peaks. Which, which is funny because I just discovered, and of course I discovered this at like 1230 in the morning uh, the <laughs> other day, that Hulu has added every season and the movies of The X-Files. Oh, yeah. Yep. 
So no, you know, really? what a great yeah. And of course you wanted to because then at twelve thirty in the morning I'm like, well, I have to watch at least an episode or two. And then and that it, goes into five. And I mean, even though I've seen them all, God knows how many times. But oh, sure, you know, it's sort of like when, like I mean, I mean, and it, maybe it, it, a stereotypical like middle aged guy thing. You're scrolling through the channels and the Godfather's on. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna have to watch that. That's I did. It's X Files. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that movie is the Shawshank Redemption. I own it in uh, several formats, but if it's on TV, same. I just oh, I have and it's it. I have the box sets of every season of the X Files and the movies and that kind of stuff. But it's on, sure, I'll mm-hmm. go ahead and watch it. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. What you, Terry, what's your stop and watch movie? Oh, well, I usually hit up uh, HLN uh, Forensic yeah. Files. Huh? Big nerd for that. I've seen them like so many times. Just, but as far as a movie, oh gosh. Um, Back to the Future, definitely oh, Back to the Future. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. So, but yeah. Speaking, have, you, have you seen like, and I and I love figuring out the difference between the people that are sharing it because they know it's funny, and the people that are sharing it because they think they're actually helping. The old like sepia tone photo of Marty McFly's parents from the school dance. Oh yeah. Yeah, and there's I the whole oh hey we found this like in a in a you know an abandoned camera yada 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 we found this print would love to you know get it back to the original people the owners does anybody yeah. know who this is and I see like one of my friends share it and I'm like uh, they're doing it to be funny I see like somebody's dad share it I'm like you you're you <laughs> you, you honestly <laughs> think you're being helpful and that's adorable but no yeah I just <laughs> seen that the other day <laughs> I almost shared it. So how many, I guess, so like how many, and I do, I've, I've seen that trend happen a lot, you know, and not just by the, you know, the artists, but I know like con organizers and that kind of stuff have started shifting to, you know, a virtual con and, and, and doing that and like, you know, focusing it on artists for, you know, half hour, hour. So, so I mean, I guess like, you know, you said you do about 12 of, you know, normal shows or so a year. How many of those virtual ones have you dove into this year? Um, well, actually, to uh, I did say 12. Those are ones in the area, but I do a lot of out-of-state. I'm actually okay. more, I'm closer to like 20 live shows a year. Um, not that that matters at this point. I've been to, I haven't actually attended officially any of the, like, the virtual ones where they're doing, you know, like live draws or things like that. Um, mostly just because I'll, with a lot of other artists, I am going through a little bit of a creative drought where I'm just kind of not feeling it a lot which is you know a little bit of a bummer haven't been as motivated as i was like to be especially with all this free time but you know you can't well, and, but all this free time comes with a lot of chaos and anxiety and everything else going on so i mean i, I know quite a few artists that are in that boat and writers yeah. and everybody else is it because of the quarantine then because you just have so much time on your hands you just lack that creative ability right now i mean i see a lot of artists say that they right now just don't have it in them right now to be creative yeah, I think it's a lot, and I'm sure, uh, I don't know about a lot of other artists, but I'm, you know, somebody who's always like, oh, I'm that introvert, so, like, the isolation isn't so much bugging me, but I also have this, like, extremely extroverted side that comes out at shows, and I almost, it's weird to say, but I, like, feed off of, like, that energy and the crowd, and, you know, I just get, like, these really intense, like, public interaction moments with all of these fans and all of these, like, all of my other creative people that, you know, most of us are trying to be safe and we're like self quarantining and we're not seeing each other unless we're doing video like chats like this. So yeah, it is, it is difficult just to not have that like constant feedback. And, you know, there's some of us where it's just like, it's exhausting to constantly ask for it online, especially with all like the stuff. It's like, you know, it almost seems selfish to be like, Hey, buy my art. Oh, sorry. Global pandemic. I hope you still have a job. <laughs> hope you still have a job to buy my art. Well, and I think that's one of the things. I think, buy my print. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I do. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people don't get is that like cons aren't just a, you know, hey, I'm going, I'm setting up a booth, come by my crap. Like everybody talks about like people that are, you know, the goat, like it's, it's all about the con fam. It's, it's all about your con family and your con friends and your con this and your con. And there's a lot of energy that, that really comes from that. And I think that's part, you know, I think that's one of the contributing factors to a lot of people being kind of in a slump right now is that you're not, you know, it, artists tend to put a lot of themselves into their work. And when you're not getting that refilled from that energy and those interactions and that kind of stuff, it eventually you run dry. That's, that's how that goes. 
Yes, that's that's a that's a beautiful way to put it. That's exact that's exactly it, you know, for so many people. And there's only so many times without getting that recharge that I can be like, Hey, here's here's the same like a hundred pieces of original art that you guys still haven't bought. <laughs> I'm just gonna <laughs> But may, maybe you want them now. Maybe about this it's one. different. How about now? How about yeah, now? how about now? now? How about now? <laughs> so, you know, without any new work it's also just like it's hard to constantly keep, you know, that like online content you know because people do as much as i hate to say it like instagram is a really great promoter for artists mm -hmm. right now like even with the algorithm changing constantly and right. like trying trying to like keep us from getting likes but that's how most of my people like and fans and like new people will find me and you know so when i do i'm able to do like live shows where i can just be like hey do you want these like when i do get um i was talking to Gary, before you started, I, um, I paint ceramics. Unfortunately, I don't have any examples with me, but you know, those are like another cool example of like original art. That's not just a piece of paper for somebody right. to hang in their house. So, you know, I have been successful on Instagram doing stuff like that, but even th there's just burnout sometimes. <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating. It's, it's incredibly frustrating right now, but I, I do feel that it's, it's kind of nice that I'm in this like weird rare position where it is easy for me to stay home and like keep other people safe and like both my parents are I mean compromised so I'm just like not I'm I can't yeah you know I, they're not gonna be responsible for like getting them sick so I'm just like okay you know I'm willing to like take a hit and like not try to do any like you know weird I've seen some of my friends doing like, what a novel awesome. concept in apparently in America I know. of other people what that's <laughs> I feel like that's so un-American these days. Well, I, 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 I did go to school in Canada, which my parents said made me very <laughs> go, liberal. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, when you're in a slump like that, have you? Uh, um, what have some? What are some of the tools that you've used to get out of it, or do you surround yourself and do you take yourself? You know, some artists, um, whether they're an actor or um, entertainer of sort, they'll they'll put themselves in a weird position to try to um, make them creative or something like that, or take them to a zone. Like if they're doing a character, they, they go into a different zone where, you know, and try to, um, you know, those are called psychedelics, Terry. Those are, those are, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you get on any good drugs? Basically what I'm saying, you have to even care. <laughs> Thanks Dave for, uh, you know, just spitting it out for me. <laughs> no, do you, uh, do you, well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. No, I, mean, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. I mean, like, there's people, nothing, I, mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. No, I mean, so. you, know, people, but, you know, people do. They change up their routine. You know, hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to try painting at night instead of in the morning. I'm going to do, you know, this instead of that. I'm going to, you know, just try to shake things up a little bit and see if that gives me a jolt. Mm -hmm. No, that uh, I do. I do try to do stuff like that. Like it is, um, it is hard without like the structure of shows and stuff where I just have this routine of like, okay, you're going to get up, you're going to make some new work, you're going to do this. So one of the things that I find the most beneficial is when, when this whole thing started, I did have like a very very small group of like two other artists where we just see each other on a constant enough basis where we're just in each other's circle so we uh one of my friends uh detroit gt who does like really amazing apparel and stuff in the fernville area he has this awesome giant warehouse and when the weather's nice we just like open the doors and he has like giant work tables so i do i like group work days i think like being together um, not working on the same thing every so often like hey you know just like getting that opinion it almost reminds me of like being back in college and just getting that like really good like constant feedback so you know yeah we, we try to do those at least like once once or twice a month to then then I can at least do something like you know I do I I am getting down on myself for not being very productive but I've also designed and printed like three new stickers and done a new colorway of enamel pin and prints and stuff like that so I'm not being like completely you know I'm not I'm not being completely unproductive but it's just not my normal level so it's really mm -hmm. just I'm trying to challenge myself and just uh, everyone's your own big, biggest critic. <laughs> nice. Uh, Kyle from uh, <laughs> down in Toledo just chimed in and he's like, yeah, uh, Dave is the Confam's weird uncle who's cooler than the others, but also kind of a curmudgeon sometimes, which I, I can't argue. I, I... <laughs> Spot on. Mm -hmm. so, so, Leslie, I want to know, when did you start drawing almost half half nude men? Ah, uh, yes. Um, the pinup series, I would say, I have the first one I ever did. I have the print of him. Let's see. This is my, yeah. 
That's my first man, Pizza Dave. <laughs> yeah. And then this is actually, this is a friend of mine in Chicago where it all just started. I was, I was doodling one night because I also have a series of, uh, where is it? I have a series of like mermen. This is a sticker. Merman pinups. So I started like I started doing male pinups just where I was like, oh, everybody has mermaids. Right. Maybe everybody wants some mermen because I'm really, really hetero. Like I think women are beautiful, but I'm just like mm -mm, dudes. So I'm just like <laughs> I want I want to see dude art. I don't want to put like naked lady art in my house. So I started with Pizza Dave, and I was just doodling him, and then I idly was like, hey, Dave in Chicago, can I? can I use your likeness? Cause all I ever talked about is pizza. And so I was able to use his likeness to be more inspired. He's like the classic nerdy, hairy, bearded, long haired dude that you see at cons everywhere. Like right. he, he gets called a different name every day of the week. Um, and then it just started from there. I took it to a convention where I usually just have like little, I, I used to do a uh, small original art of like little animals and things like that, you know, very child friendly and then I've deferred it. So I took this guy, I took Dave to a convention once. He sold out within an hour. And nice. while I was there, I started drawing like my next two dudes. So it just, it kind of started from there. People really appreciated like how real he looked and how like body, body positive it was for men. And you know how, like a lot of people, First, a lot of people tried to say I was objectifying men, which I didn't appreciate because they're not objectified. These are fully consenting adults. Right. <laughs> well, you go to a con and you're going to see boobs everywhere, basically. Right. But that's the first booth I've ever seen man buns, I guess, at or uh, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> the man buns. I you like know? man buns. Man buns. Oh, yeah, so, man and, buns and, like that. And my wife's a big fan. Of nice. <laughs> That one so, looks like Harry a little bit. Hey, hmm? I, I, yeah. for the record, I'm not going to confirm nor deny that I've posed for her. So. <laughs> you know, he's, you know he, okay, there's, a, there's a little Rocky Horror uh, in, in Terry. I think there might be. Anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's well, he's definitely... <laughs> If I get any um, people asking for guys, they're always like, oh my God, bigger and beefier. So, you know, I might just have to look up some old wrestling photos for some inspiration, you know, just a oh, thought. Oh. Yeah. Right, right there, Terry. This is a big one for the Michigan people, no. which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny when I take this out of town and then have to explain to people what juggalos are. <laughs> and Fago. And Fago. Right. Yeah. And then people try to. Uh, People try to tr tell me that the jugglers are bad people, and then I just I won't I won't have it. I'm all about right. family. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, I don't like their music. I think they're very cool, compassionate dudes, and well, all and of the jugglers I've ever met are the nicest people in the world. And they locked themselves down and canceled the gathering. And like yes. they were, like they were one of the most responsible groups in this country before anybody else even started thinking about that nonsense. Yes. I mean, you got to give them cred. Mm -hmm. Well, they both like I don't know about Shaggy Tuna, but Violent J's got a kid, man. Yep. And, like. And he's cool. I was actually just looking up photos of him as a furry because his daughter is a furry and he wanted to be able to share those cons with her. So he's got a juggalo wolf persona. Yep. It's amazing. Nice. So, so yeah, this is another like, um, I'm unfortunately, I'm so terrible at names, but one of my friends, one of my um, friends in Detroit, like knows uh, the promoter of ICP and I, he ran into me at a con and he saw that and he was just like, oh my God, I need to give you a hug. And he's this like big friendly dude. And he like whispered it in my ear. He's like, I don't like to tell a lot of people, but I'm gay because people don't think it's cool. And I'm like, oh my God. So he was just like so excited that there was this like positive male, like sexualized, not sexualized, however you want to look at it, like that's juggalo awesome. reference. Yeah. Awesome. Right. And that's, that's, I love those. I get positive, more positive interactions than I get negative, which is wonderful. And I just think that like, men need to be confident in their bodies and like there's all this talk about men being macho and you know like not worrying about it and when you don't realize that like a lot of those people are like negged just as badly and they're shamed for being like overweight or like not having the v-man muscle body or like dad this yeah dad bod like i love dad hey, bod but hey, at the same time i'm like i prefer don't. to think of it as father figure <laughs> 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 uh, well, we all have, so. Yeah. Um, 
So that's why I like getting a positive view of men. So whenever people try to like tell me that my guys are like objectified, I'm like, no, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, go, tell you what, walk two booths down and then come back and talk to me about objectification. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think a lot of, a lot of people with that attitude, yeah, exactly. A lot of people with that attitude, they try to, I do see that more at comic cons where you do see the women and then they'll come back where they're trying to be like, yeah, it's just as bad for dudes. And I'm like, let's just not be like that at all. Just, how like about just, it's just not bad? It's, it's yeah, how okay about it's just not bad. to be sexual, uh, you know, no matter what you look like. It's, exactly. that's okay. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I have nothing, I have no problem with all of the raunchy, crazy, awesome, sexy stuff you see at cons either, as long as they're considered consenting adults. Right. <laughs> yep. Well, and I, and I honestly, I, I think that's one of the things that a lot of people miss, and I love getting, and that I've, I've gotten deep into conversations with a few people lately who I like, who I know from cons and who I know that are like big sci fi, you know, whatever fans, and they're going off on certain topics. And I'm like, do you not understand that? everything that I know you love supports what you're complaining about. Like there, there is no more of an open accepting genre that like, you know, than sci-fi and, and, and comic books and all that kind of stuff. They've all, they say, Oh, they're, they're trying to push this agenda down my throat. No, dude, they've been talking about it for 40 years. You, you mm-hmm. just haven't paid attention. It's, yeah. and, and that's okay. <laughs> but, but, but don't think of it. Like, don't try to make it an issue now. Cause <laughs> Yeah. Well, Leslie, I've seen Eduardo Martin said, "Oh, she's awesome. Love her stuff, and she's super nice." Yeah, uh, I, thanks, I Eduardo. Think Eduardo's pretty right. And Kyle Northrop said, "Is that Dave Shite? Pizza Dave?" Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's Kyle. Dave Shite. I yes, mean, he, he gave me permission, but it's still one of those like he writes kids comics. I don't want to like. Uh, well, that's Kyle's fault. Then we'll just blame it on Kyle. Oh, that's fine. But yeah, Dave Dave Shite's amazing. We actually uh, he wrote a a very short one-page story that I did for Ayak Comics years and years and years ago. And I loved working with Art Balthazar is just like one of the nicest humans in the planet. So it was so cool to be involved in that. I got to read something real quick because I'm getting paid to do so. Uh, Deck Burners is buying magic and gathering cards, sets and sealed boxes. Deck Burners will also purchase collections of comics, Dungeons and Dragons and other RPGs as well as coins, gold, and silver. Deck Burners is located on 5071 North Dixie Highway, Suite 7, Newport, Michigan, inside the Supermatch Gun Shop. They're open seven days a week, and you can contact them by phone, 734-384-3806, or email them at blix70 at charter.net. So this way, Terry and I will have some money to make some ads for this show, and hopefully yeah. we get people watching us and listening to us. And uh, But yeah, so thank you, uh, Deck Burners, for... For giving us that spot to put on there today cool you know. also leslie where can they find you i mean i know you have your gingerly made so what is that etsy or is that uh um on etsy unfortunately the gingerly made domain that's a ongoing battle but um on etsy i am basically go to etsy shop the shop name is leslie bot l-e-s-l-i-e b-o-t like a leslie robot um and there you can find all of this stuff on instagram i am gingerly made and that's a really easy way to get in touch there's also a link to my etsy right there and then you can see a lot of my art what i'm working on um right now i won't lie it's a little politically charged but you know everyone's a little politically charged right now (laughs) well bet is that your art on your shirt yes this is my art on my shirt this is uh one of my yes it's a heart heart and a man's butt a lot of people like to call it the back sack. The back sack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. I have it on stickers as well. Oh, look, in color even. <laughs> yeah, in, in color, there it's a glittery enamel pin. It's it's one of those, it started out as a, this design, it started out as a weird, uh, I drew on the inside of my mugs just to be like, oh, here's a little like surprise when you're done with your coffee. <laughs> and everybody who was buying my ceramics uh, were just like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I made um, ornaments and people wanted magnets and it turned into stickers. And now I like to say that it's, I have different commitment levels, you know, <laughs> depending on how much you, you like uh, men's butts. <laughs> now, did, they, did they know that was going to be at the bottom of their mug or was that a little surprise? Well, um, some people like I I do, I didn't do it on any of my commission mugs without, you know, people expecting it because that would just be a little shocking, you know, unless if they were full on, if they were like, hey, here, draw my husband naked, then I figured they wouldn't mind. But if it was like a here's a merman mug, I wasn't gonna put a button there. But it was mostly a since I do, um, I'll 
build up a small collection of my handmade ceramics and I will take them to like live shows or sell them at, um, I'm in a small store in the Rust Belt, Outer Spaceways Apparel, and I believe they are open normal hours just on Saturday and Sunday right now. All That's distancing practices, yeah. yeah. All distancing practices are taken and you have to wear a mask, but you can find me there if you want to go shop in person, some of my ceramics. So yeah, I do do a lot of uh, naked male ceramics where it would already have like a nude man on it. So it was a little bit of a surprise, but I don't think it was a shock to anybody. <laughs> it would be a shock to be drinking your coffee or your uh, pop or whatever out of that mug. Well, I mean, it's, it's not like she's selling them full of coffee, Gary. Like, I mean, uh, like you can see it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would say it. Like, like when, you, when you're in the store, it, it doesn't come with a free cup of coffee. Like it's yeah, like, I guess you're going <laughs> to well, yeah, no. their bug before they drink it. Some people do like if you're. I mean, I don't know about oh, commercial yeah. mugs. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how about like commercial mugs, but I think when I'm buying a handmade mug, like people will like study it and make oh, it feel okay. good. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, people people know what's inside before they're buying it. it normally, like sometimes it'll take a minute, and then you see like oh, which is oh, that's always fun. I didn't think it was that. Just like uh, this, this shirt, like initially how you were like, oh, it's a heart. Um, I'll do craft shows where I'll hang this up outside my booth and, you know, like flocks of old women in the more like 10 a.m. at this like outdoor craft show will be like, oh, look, you should get that design. It's a heart. And then they get closer and then like, wait a minute. Then they get closer and then they're like, oh, and then they just walk away. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> what does something like that typically sell for? What are, you, or what are your, like your commission rates and... Uh... Uh, well, uh, prints and stuff, like most of my, the stuff that you'll see on Etsy, like stickers start around $3. I have uh, um, enamel pins that are anywhere from 12 to 16. Uh, T-shirts are 20. I try to keep it fairly reasonable. And all these are printed by myself. I, I use a Detroit GT in Ferndale, also lets me use a studio so I can change colors, do sizing, stuff like that. Um, prints will run 22 in person so that'll be an eight and a half by 11 and then if you are interested if people are interested i do um like eight and a half by 11 or um eight by ten commissions uh, most commission rates if you're just looking for like a private boudoir shot if you want a portrait wedding stuff doesn't have to be nude most of them are uh those start around 140 dollars for one person and then you get full color whatever food you want or you know sometimes i've had people just have me draw like batman really nicely for a yeah. nice watercolor painting thinking about booking terry a spot so he can get a picture oh yeah, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, put a, maybe put a nice championship belt over the you know oh, the, yeah. the man sack or the butt sack or whatever you want to call them <laughs> yeah. you need the well, championship can... belt uh that's got uh the garters on it to hold up oh. the thigh high yeah. I, I feel yeah. like i feel like that's the look you should be going for I, really, yeah. yeah i think that sounds really good well, just don't, don't, don't crazy crazy that right. outfit <laughs> Yeah, the belt was a good one. Yeah, so that's that actually. Was, I feel, and there's and there's your new campaign photo. I let's right. let's be real. Hey. Like, <laughs> you gotta and let you let will. all the liberals know that you're really cool. They'll just right. be like, oh, this guy is badass. Oh wait, am I? Okay. Sorry, forgot to ask if I could swear. Okay. No, yeah, no, there's no FCC rules on podcasts. We're allowed hey. one ass a, a, a show. So, well, yeah. good. Uh, hopefully that doesn't apply to pictures. <laughs> <laughs> No, because there's two of them on there every week, so. Aha, right. but I'm uh, Actually, it's funny that you uh, mentioned, like, the belt covering the bits, Gary, because uh, I drew Big Vin Dustin, who hangs out with the oh, Astronomicon yeah. guys, because yeah. I was... Uh, oh, was that my show, there, I think. At the, your show, because yeah, in the very first Muro Comic Con I did, it was right across from them, so I was just like, oh, this guy needs to be drawn, and I just, like, quietly sat there and drew him all day and just, like, dropped it in front of him at the end of the con. Yeah, he had and... big mohawk kind of hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. neon green at the time, that... and he was just walking around. He's a giant mountain of he a is. man. He is. He's a great yeah. dude, yeah. So, yeah, Terry, what's your favorite food? <laughs> <laughs> pizza. <laughs> I don't know why I have a craving for pizza. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a bit of an artist myself. I, uh, for Impact Wrestling back in 2008, we were asked to draw something and it would be put on uh, trading cards. And I want you to judge my art. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And Dave, please chime in. And uh, you can be honest. See, Can you see that? Too close. Back up. I... <laughs> there you go. I got the sun. It's a family. They're out, you know, on the day, you know, going boating and little bit of grass 
Hey, I don't. Uh, I, I never. I never tell anybody their art uh, is bad because it's, it's so better good. than anything I can do. Right. I you know what. Yeah. <laughs> Best thing on that card was the TNA logo. Oh. Right. <laughs> hey, Gary, that's pretty mean. No, I, but I mean, your stuff was really good too. But Gary's always mean. You know, you're talking. Uh, yeah, so he's always mean to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. No, so they, actually, uh, they asked us to draw art you know and that was the whole gimmick behind it you know do your best you know mm -hmm. come up with anything and i'm like all right i'll just draw some stick figures and because it's, it's pretty hard you it's know? so wholesome yeah. content though yeah and i'm i'm with you i don't ever say that anybody is bad at art because i hate to stifle anybody's creativity right. you did it and i think it's awesome and yeah. you chose some wholesome content Right, who would think a big burly wrestler is going to do a family? Thing? Yeah, like a family with kids, and it looked like a picnic yeah. basket on her arm. That's a yeah. nice day you drew. Yeah, right. Hey, everybody, everybody likes something and picnics and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Apparently, Gary don't. <laughs> <laughs> what a curmudgeon, Gary. Uh, right. You're just like Uncle Dennis Dave. Leary. Gary's right. anti family. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I like the stick figures when you know that some of them are missing, kind of thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, that's just me. But we're right. probably gonna have to wrap this up. We can just go on and talk all day. But Dave's <laughs> got things to do. Yep. Terry probably don't have nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I did see your uh, your Power Rangers commission you did. Yes, uh, that was awesome. Uh, I, it's the first Power Rangers thing that I've ever gotten to draw. It was uh, somebody's wife wanted to get a birthday surprise for her husband. And she gave me this long list of stuff he liked. And I drew, you know, normally when you get a commission from me, you can just tell me whatever you want to draw. Uh, and then you get to choose from like two thumbnails. And she wanted to choose the Power Rangers one. And I was so excited because like, and of all the Rangers, like the Green Ranger with the flu. And I was just like, yep, I was very excited to draw that. And just love that he's topless with, but you got to leave the gloves on because that's an important Power Ranger thing. Yeah. You got to leave the gloves on. You got to leave the gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> but all uh, right, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks, Dave, for, for joining us and having a gentleman for, uh, for Jason. And uh, you're not a Power Ranger, but you're, you're our Power Ranger. No, I, yeah, I'm, I, I'm nowhere near that cool. I'm, he wore uh, red. <laughs> you're a red. I know, player. who knew? I, I, yeah. yeah, I just, I. <laughs> Perfect outfit. So make sure you guys check out Big Dave's Boat Yard. Uh, got a couple of docks available, right? Some wells available out there, Terry? Yeah, a couple. we have a couple left, yeah. Nice. So, uh, so get in there. Come, in the Michigan. Some, summer's winding down, so you guys need to get those boats in. Um, Arnold Pop Fest, not looking good. Got to admit. Uh, you know, we'll probably have an announcement here pretty soon. Uh, I can't I can't not listen to the government saying, hey, no more than 10 people inside. And then still make you guys wear masks. You know, I'm not going to listen to half the rules and not all the rules, and it's just not safe. So, oh, which which makes you a better person than some mm -hmm. people that are still trying to make shit happen. I just, I just want to slap. It's not safe, uh, you know. It's like you said, it's a kind family, so mm, yeah, my family would be in danger. So I don't want you guys to be in danger. But yeah, we'll have an announcement here pretty soon, just to let everybody know where we're at. And uh, as an artist, I appreciate the consideration, but mm -hmm. yeah, nobody's. Like shows are just going to be lower attended, so why why risk it? Yeah, well, it's not going to be yeah. it's not going to be a safe show, and it's not going to be a successful show. I mean, it's just you know letting ten people at a time, and even that we can't do that because we have two hundred vendors. So mm -hmm. yeah, and then what, well, and, what, and I mean, and that's the other thing. You know, we've and I think we've talked about this before. You know, it's it's not even just the vendors and the attendees. It's you know how long is it going to be before you know these celebs that are usually a draw to these cons are going to be comfortable, you know, throwing their arm around somebody for a selfie, you know, for $200 or whatever the hell they're selling them for these days. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be a weird world in the comic con space, which, but candidly, like, I'm not going to lie. I'd be a lot. I, I'm okay. If, if it starts getting away from the, the pop culture fests that they've become and they become more comic con ish and it is more about, you know, the artists and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it'll, it, like I said, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how things shake out over the course of the next year. Even with that, I mean, a lot of our artists, like uh, Ken Lashley, was going to come from Canada, mm -hmm. and, and they can't come here now anyway. Right. You know, our one of our guests from England, he can't fly here. I mean, he yep. just so it, it's it's a tough situation. You want to do what's safe and what's best for everybody. Uh, they'll go on. There'll be more. So, mm -hmm. so 
but I want to thank you for coming on. We had to end that on a real good, you know, positive note. You yeah. know? <laughs> well, let's see that shirt again. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's how I feel about this year. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> this year is the back sack and not in a good way. <laughs> right. Back sack 2020. That's... Back sack 2020. <laughs> no, thank you for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure. And uh, we'll hope to see you in person again soon. Yes, so. definitely. Thank you so much. Really good to meet you two gentlemen. Thank you. And, uh, drawn. Those, yeah. those man, uh, mermen. Or, yes. uh, what is it again? Mermen, right? Mer yeah, mermen. mermen. Some people like to say like m like mer dude. Mer dudes are fine, but some people will say like mer guy dudes, mermaids, yeah. which cracks right, me right. up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like that's a whole di that's a whole different category. I feel like guy mermaids. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. It, it would would be cross dressing. Might be. Might yeah, be. Yeah, I trans, haven't done. Might mm -hmm. be. <laughs> that is one thing I haven't explored. Like I do try to have a lot of visibility in my work, so I do have trans models, all that stuff. I uh, drag models, but I haven't explored that in the mermaid community, mer people community. So maybe I will. Maybe that'll be my new spark of inspiration to get drawing again. Yeah. Yeah, I actually watched something about that. Like uh, guys and girls, they'll get the the outfits and they'll go rent a pool and they do that stuff. Uh, it was mm -hmm. very interesting. And they're like, you know, this is just like a hobby and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is really cool because their outfits are crazy. They're oh, like yeah. great. And then they go and swim and stuff. And I thought about that, you know, having a marina doing like a kids thing where you're like, wow, mermaids, you know, men and women, mermen mm -hmm. and mer mermaids. You know, and then drop them off in a boat, have them come up, and you know these kids would actually think they're real. You know, yeah, I thought about <laughs> that, doing that down the road. I, I, I think they were out in uh, um, California, but they're very passionate about it. And actually, just, there are, there are people here in Michigan that do that. That I, mm -hmm. I actually know two. I, of, I know two of the people that are really heavily into that. Yeah, yeah. As a kid, if I went to something like that, I it would have blown my mind. You know, so, but yeah, yeah. have it like for the community and stuff. You know, so I think anyway. that's a I think it's a great idea. I've done commissions yeah. for Michigan mermaids. Like no nobody who does it professionally, but you know, people who just like, you know, they wanna do it in their own backyards. They have their own yeah. tails and I've drawn yeah. them in their custom tails. Because you're right, the outfits are amazing. Oh, they are. They are. So All right, yeah, we got yeah. one person here who wants to say I need that shirt. So why don't you tell people where and if they can get that shirt? Okay, unfortunately, the black is out of stock right now, um, and I'm having problems with supply lines like a lot of people. I do have this in a dusty mauve color, and you can find this on my Etsy shop. So once again, that's etsy.com slash shop slash LeslieBot, L-E-S-L-I-E-B-O-T. Or you could always just get me on Instagram, gingerlymade, and uh, we could work it out from there. Just DM me. Awesome. All right. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Uh we Thank will have you. the next Terry and Gary's Low Expectations show. Hopefully next week. Uh, <laughs> do we have the guest next next week, Terry, lined up? Yes, Eric Young. Eric Young, WWE next, uh, Impact. So some little wrestling news next week. And uh, you can see us on YouTube, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and uh, now Spotify. So uh, check us out, Terry and Gary's Low Expectations podcast. Thanks for coming, and we will see you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.